Really the best way to countermeasure cracking tools like Cain and Abel and Brutus and others is to not use passwords at all. Okay, to move to newer types of authentication, uh, two-factor and multi-factor authentication. But if you have to use passwords, here's my mantra, keep it long and strong, but not for long. Okay, so you want long passwords, the longer the better, and it's shown that, that longer passwords are really the most effective and strong in the sense of complex, multiple alphanumeric characters that are not dictionary words or not QWERTY patterns on the keyboard and don't have those passwords for long. Try to change them every 30 to 45 days. That's my mantra. Go ahead and distribute that as your own mantra if you want to. Keep it long and strong, but not for long. Also, I have a word for you as a security practitioner. If you have weak, simple passwords or you allow weak, simple passwords or your passwords are so complex that they cannot be remembered at all, you have to be written down on sticky notes. Okay, so my word for you is bogus plus forgotten is bogotten. So we want to eliminate bogotten passwords and passphrases as well, ones that are extremely simple or so complicated and so complex that nobody could ever make a mnemonic for it and they have to write it down on some sticky note. So no bogotten passwords. Let's talk now about the forgotten password feature issue or the password reset technique that you see on websites. One of the challenges we have as security practitioners is there's no industry standard for implementing a forgotten password feature. So the result is that you see applications forcing users to jump through a myriad of hoops involving emails or special URLs or creating temporary passwords, creating and answering personal security questions and so on. And with some applications, you can recover your existing password, but others, you have to reset it to a new value. And I remember recently, being in, you know, I think it was Dante's first circle of hell, okay, known as Limbo, because I changed my phone number. And one of the payment sites was using my old number for SMS verification. So I would go up to the site to log in, and it kept asking me to do a two-factor authentication, but to my old phone number on my old phone. And when I contacted customer service, they said, well, you need to log into your account and change your password or change your phone number. I'm like, yeah, here's the problem. I can't log into my account to change my phone number because it keeps sending the two-factor authentication to my old phone on my old number. So even they couldn't figure it out. So they, they just eventually, you know, temporarily removed the two-factor authentication until I could go and, and get it figured out. So these types of things, you know, we need to look for solutions for our employees and for our organizations and make sure the processes we go through to deal with forgotten passwords, either on our commercial websites or our internal intranet, are standardized and done in a secure fashion. Now, in this demonstration video, we want to isolate some of the top products that are out there and go do some homework to make sure we're prepared for the exam. Some of the endpoint scanners, some of the best ones for 2017 are actually products that we are going to look at. Maybe we've already looked at in this particular course. Uh, on my systems, I'm running Sophos. I'm running Malwarebytes. I'm running Symantec. Uh, Symantec is considered one of the best scanners. It's part of their endpoint protection suite. Others would be Webroot. I mentioned Malwarebytes. Uh, Guidance Software is one of the top ones for 2017. Let's take a look at Carbon Black real quick. Notice that we're at the Carbon Black site and they're reminding us about one of the newer ransomware attacks that has been out in the fall of 2017. It's called Bad Rabbit. Uh, this is really a problem for the Europeans right now. It's really showing itself in, in Western and Eastern Europe, not so much in the United States, but again, just one of those uh, bad ransomware campaigns like WannaCry and others that we've dealt with in 2017. And of course, if you're watching this recording in 2018 or 2019, I'm sure there's some new ransomware threat that you're having to deal with. But Carbon Black is actually one of the forerunners in a wide variety of security solutions. But if you go to their products up here, they've got several things that you might want to go and check out by use case. So whenever you see solutions and you see by use case, so for example, over here, uh, you want to make sure that you go and kind of take a look at different case studies, okay? And case studies are really one of the best ways to learn about products, understand about products without having to go and purchase the product. 
and then a few products here. They've got CB Defense, Carbon Black Defense, which is their next generation antivirus and EDR. CB Response, which is their threat hunting and their incident response for your security operations center teams, your hunt teams, and CB Protection, application control for servers and critical systems. For example, your ICS controllers in your SCADA environment. So Carbon Black uh, is one of the top products that does you know excellent scanning and visibility and remediation on endpoints. So you want to check that out. You also want to be aware of the top password crackers, and you're going to find most of these in Kali Linux and Metasploit and other exploit kits. Crackers can be specialty tools, okay? They can specialize in cracking Adobe PDFs. They can specialize in cracking Snapchat. But the top five for enterprise vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, in my humble opinion, would be Brutus, B-R-U-T-U-S, which is an older one, okay? I don't think it's been updated since like 2010, but it's still very powerful. There's also John the Ripper, which you'll find that, of course, in Cali, as well as Kane Enable, or just simply Kane, and then WFuzz, capital W-F-U-Z-Z. There's also Rainbow Crack. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Rainbow Crack is not a typical hash cracking tool uh, because it's actually going to use rainbow tables. So by cracking hashes with rainbow tables, and rainbow tables, of course, uh, are going to have kind of a pre-computed list, computed and stored in a rainbow table format. And it's time consuming to create these on the front end, but once you have the rainbow table created, it then speeds up the process. And if you're using you know, a really fast graphics processing card, uh, you can actually be very effective at, at cracking. And so it just shows you some of the features down here. And you could, this is a free tool uh, to download and install. Okay. And if you look down here, you can see uh, various versions, Windows and Linux. And of course, you can see the GPU acceleration options over here. The other thing that's really effective about using Rainbow Crack, if you're doing penetration testing and auditing, is they actually have rainbow tables. So uh, there's a couple of there's several YouTube videos up here which you might want to check out. I don't really have time to go through and and do a demonstration of of cracking an MD5 hash, but you can simply go watch these 10 minute videos on using uh, rainbow tables to crack NTLM. When I say crack, what you're doing is you're discovering the input to the cryptographic hash. So NTLM, MD5, MD and SHA1, which obviously should tell you that you should be using SHA2. SHA-256 or higher, but they've got some rainbow tables down here and they show, you know, different types for NTLM MD5 that are ASCII or mixed alphanumeric. So you can download these rainbow tables and when you install Rainbow Crack and you find a hash file on your system, you simply load up the rainbow table and you go at it, okay? And so one of those powerful cracking tools that would be in the same line as John the Ripper and Kane and WFuzz. I also want to mention password managers, which are excellent tools, especially for the small to medium sized business. Uh, I use a password manager called Dashlane, which is very popular. I also, since I use Zoho uh, for a wide variety of tools like CRM and MDM, as well as my webmail, zoho.com, Z-O-H-O, they have a product called Zoho Vault. And so these password managers allow you to create a master password. And so with, uh, I use both of these, but with my 50 some odd different website passwords I've accumulated over the years, I can use one strong master password. And these tools, which can be used for your end users, also use multi-factor authentication and strong disk encryption on the master password. And so a couple of products I want to recommend to you here for password managers would be Dashlane and Zoho Vault. And there are others, uh, but do your research.